Uh, when did you find out you were coming up? Who told you and, and what's the reaction? Uh, Gary Kendall called me, uh, AAA manager called me this morning just before 10 o'clock. And uh, I was just kind of waking up and, uh, you know, obviously told me, congratulations, you're going to Baltimore. And, and I thought he was messing around with me right away. <laughs> and uh, I asked him if he was serious. And he's like, obviously, I wouldn't joke around about that. So it was it was a pretty big shock to me. Rich Dubroff, go ahead. Uh, Jay, you've been in this organization a long time and you've pitched it all. You've pitched at all the levels. You were never one of the the boldface name kind of prospects. How, you know, how surprising is it? Or is it surprising that that your name was called? I mean, it's it's for me, it was it was definitely a surprise factor, but it was just kind of like the the feeling of of a lot of hard work coming to fruition and everything and seeing all the work that I put in this offseason and uh, trying to reinvent myself as a pitcher and everything kind of in their eyes, you know, they they're starting to recognize me. So that for me, that was everything. Dan Connolly, go ahead. Hey, was there a time where you felt like you're officially on their radar. When did you go, do you think, in your mind from being just another guy to be somebody that they were paying attention to? Um, I think for me this offseason, uh, I really worked as far as uh, my velocity and, and just kind of cleaning some things up as a pitcher, mechanically, mentally, everything like that. Um, and uh, I think in spring training, for me, it was really important to just kind of hit the ground running as far as how I've been feeling in the offseason. And uh, I, I think that that kind of showed it in in their eyes that they could see that I was somebody that that was a different pitcher than years past. Steve Molesky, go ahead. Yeah, you probably got enough going on to not even worry about this, but does your promotion send a message to other guys out there who aren't getting a lot of publicity or aren't on the top 30 list or aren't always talked about that your day can come to? I mean, yeah, I, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but, you know, I, I would absolutely like to think that uh, that a lot of guys see me as an example of of somebody that had kind of come from under the radar like that and uh, how fast things can change. You know, um, I went to bed last night as a regular minor leaguer and woke up this morning and my life changed forever. So it's things can happen that fast and, and with the hard work and, and mindset and everything, like I said, for me to <clears throat> have it pay off has, has been unbelievable. Nathan Ruiz, go ahead. Hey, Jay, you mentioned being a different pitcher. And what in what ways do you feel like you've used the last year plus to get better? Um, for me, it's it's kind of been breaking down mechanics and, and seeing things from a different perspective of um, just kind of getting down the mound and creating energy and where I've been not taking advantage of it. And, uh, and for me, it's been cleaning up some arm path issues and stuff like that. And, and with those two things, it's, it's my velo has been up and, and just kind of all the pitches have been a little bit better. So. Melanie Newman, go ahead. Jay, we've heard a lot of really positive reactions from players about this alternate site setup from the accessibility to get to Baltimore, but also just the way that everything is scheduled, the intensive personalized work. Um, what have been your thoughts about it so far? And did that make this morning a little easier for you? Yeah, it, the alternate site was great. We got a we got a great group of guys from you know the players there to the coaching staff, everything like that. Um, you know, guys have been been playing well there's good competition against each other and uh you know like you said just being so close to Baltimore this morning when I got the call knowing that I didn't have to hop on a flight and, and the guys were at home and everything and I could you know make my way up it was it was really nice Mark Viviano go ahead hey Jay congrats uh you joined what is not a long list of North Dakotans who play uh Major League Baseball Rick Helling was here uh briefly just your thoughts on uh, your state and uh, and the pride, I guess, of uh, making it to this point, being from there. Yeah, uh, like you said, it's there's it's not exactly a hotbed for baseball, but uh, you know it's 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 crazy to see the amount of support that I've had just today from people reaching out from you know back home and and stuff like that has been 
remarkable and and knowing that people are following me in my career and everything and and it it means a lot kevin brown go ahead hey jay two quick ones first of all for those of us that haven't seen you um what pitches do you throw i throw a fastball uh curveball and split finger and then to to build off of viv um how did you as a kid growing up and not the most frenzy to baseball hotbeds. How'd you get involved in the game? How'd you get your start? Um, just like any other sport, you know, growing up, my friends all played it and everything. So that was something that, you know, my friends were playing it. So I wanted to too, but um, as, as time went on and I got older and everything, it was, it was something that I just kind of fell in love with. And uh, <clears throat> for me, it was, I, I felt success early and everything. And then, you know, going into college, I knew that I wanted to play baseball and, and it was just a matter of where. And, and so that's just kind of how everything started and took off.